Hello and welcome back. Uh, it's Friday and this is the conclusion to this week's devotionals. Um, you may have noticed this week that um, these devotionals have been a progression um, and uh, I've been kind of trying to lead us down a path. And I yesterday we spoke about um, that we should be glorifying God just because what he did for us personally. Uh, because we're so grateful and we should be so moved by our own personal salvation that we should just want to shout it from the rooftops. And today I want to talk about something similar. It's I want to talk about you know sharing the gospel, but also out of the reason why we should share the gospel also should be out of our love for our fellow man. Um, if we've received this great thing called salvation, then we should want the same thing for other people. Uh, the the miracle that Jesus performs, the healing that he performs, that uh, I believe shows this, is in Mark chapter 2. Um, it's also in Matthew and in Luke. But the the passage that I'm going to be reading out of is, is Mark chapter 2. And this is when uh, four men bring a paralytic man to Jesus uh, to be healed. And I'm only going to read the uh, first five verses of chapter 2. Um, and I just I want to point out the, an important point here. So starting at verse 1, And again he entered in, into Capernaum, speaking about Jesus, after some days, and it was noised that he was in the house. And straight away uh, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born, by, born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto, nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down a, the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. So there's some really important stuff I want to point out with this. Um, first, I want to notice here that it was noised that Jesus was in the house. Uh, when we come to church, everybody should know we're coming to church. Uh, that kind of plays on yesterday's. We should be noising uh, that Jesus is here. Jesus is with us. Um, now, I want to notice also that this man that was sick of the palsy, he was born by four, and we'll, we'll come back to that later. But I want you to notice what these men do to get this man to Jesus. See, there was... There was no room. The house was completely full. They couldn't get in. So what they did was, is they carried this man on top of the roof. They tore the roof up, and then so that they could lower him down to Jesus. The amount of effort that these men take in getting this man to Jesus is awe-inspiring. They These men believed in Jesus so much that they went through all of that to get their friend to him. And Jesus' response is to all of their faith, not just the man that was sick of the palsy, but Jesus responds saying this, when he Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, we often think of salvation as a solitary act, and in the, the truest sense, it is. Uh, in that moment, when you are praying and to accept Jesus into your heart, that is a solitary act. That is up to you. But we need to not downplay the effect of other believers in the salvation of others. Uh, we need to not downplay our role in the salvation of others. And what that what is that role? Well, we have to get them to Jesus. Um, that's very simply put there, but uh, we, we Jesus looks at 
all of the faith of the believers also. You see, sometimes we need to get out there and get people to that point where they may accept Jesus. Now, when they're there, it is up to them of whether or not to accept it, but it is our responsibility to get them to that point. Uh, nobody comes to know Jesus in a vacuum. I don't believe that uh, people can come to know Jesus by another name. I don't believe that uh, that randomly uh, people can just have a, an epiphany and accept Jesus because we have God's word today and we have believers that are specifically charged with taking the word to people. I want to point you to another passage today that really illustrates this point. Uh, it kind of echoes this same situation here. Uh, this situation uh, talks about these men that lowered him down to Jesus and Jesus seeing their faith uh, and forgiving their sins. But I want you to point to, uh, I want you to open your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. Uh, and this is a verse we know very well. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will shall be saved. Now that's a very common verse that we talk about very often. But what comes right after that verse? Well, right after that verse, it shows responsibility on us. You see, it says, For whoever, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then in verse 14, How then... Shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our son who hath believed our report? So then, Paul making a conclusion here, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now I want to go back to verse 14 there. It says, How shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed, and how shall they believe? in him of whom they have not heard, and how shall they hear without a preacher? You see, people need to hear the word of God, meaning that somebody has to say it to them. Somebody has to be bringing the word of God to people. So if we think back on that situation where these men bringing him to Jesus, that man could not have gotten to Jesus had not these men carried him there. So what does this look like for us in the world today? Well, like Roman said, we need to be telling people about the word of God. It's pretty simple, but we should love our neighbors enough to tell them what Jesus did for us. You see, we should love Jesus enough to be telling people about what he did. It makes sense, right? If you love someone, if you are happy for what they did for you, you're going to tell people about it. And if you have a cure for something otherwise incurable, then you are going to want to provide that to other people. There is a cure for sin and death, and that is Jesus. So what kind of people are we if we withhold that from our fellow man. We're supposed to be loving other people. Well, do you truly love other people if you are not telling them about Jesus? How beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Think about that. How beautiful are the feet. These guys, what, it, what it's talking about there, you see, they had sandals at that time. Their shoes are not the same as ours. So you were, if you were, if walking places, if you were going to tell people, your feet were dirty. So we need to get our feet dirty. We, 
I, I, I believe Pastor talked about this a, a while ago, but we need to get our feet dirty when we're going to tell people about Jesus. We need to be out there walking, telling people. We need to be walking the walk. You know, not just going to church on Sundays. We need to be telling people in our lives. So, as a bit of a recap this week, first, I focused on uh, what Jesus did for us. What, that Jesus first has the power and the desire to save. The second day was that he has this intimate knowledge of us as our creator. He knows exactly what to fix in our hearts. The third day, he, met, he has this offer for us. You see, then, then the, that's, that's where the work of Jesus, then it shifts onto us. We have to respond to Jesus' offer. And then Jesus expects some things of us after we're saved. Jesus expects us to glorify him in our lives. Be just solely because we love him. Then Jesus expects us to tell other people about him. Jesus commanded us to do so in the Great Commission, because we love our neighbor. We're supposed to love our neighbor. So there is a progression as a Christian. You see, you Jesus does all this work so that you could have eternal life. And then after you if you after you receive salvation, there are some things that are expected of you. The consequence of not doing this is disappointing your Lord. And that's not a very nice thing. But it's it's not like you're going to necessarily lose your salvation if you don't tell people about Jesus. You're not going to lose your salvation. But Jesus still expects this of you and you should want to do it. So there's a call to action here. What are you willing to do? to get other people to Jesus? Are you willing to tear the roof off like these guys did? Are you willing to carry someone there? We need to work in order to get others to believe. Uh, we need It's our responsibility to set up the meeting between them and Jesus and let Jesus do the rest of the work.